Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today's camera is going to be uh, another Yashica camera. I've done a lot of Yashica videos recently and uh, these seem to be uh, very uh, interesting to people. I get a lot of uh, views whenever I put uh, the word Yashica uh, in the title of a video. So uh, in order to keep things going and keep interest high I decided to make yet a, another uh, Yashica video but one about uh, Yashica which is something different than what I usually do. And there's going to be a video about another Yashica TLR camera. In this case, it's going to be the Yashica Auto. For those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras in my online store, japanvintagecamera.com. I have another store on Etsy, which is also called Japan Vintage Camera. So if you'd like to buy a Yashica TLR camera like this one here, or another vintage Japanese camera, please visit one of my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So in the 1950s, Yashica was the world's top producer of twin lens reflex cameras, and they made a variety of numbers. A lot of them were, I guess, letter models, so the, the A, B, and C, and D. And then there were other models like uh, this one here, which was the Auto. Uh, the Yashica Auto is kind of unique among the uh, uh, Yashica Flex cameras because it has kind of a, a mix of features uh, that you find on uh, the more common uh, Yashica Flex versions and the more high-end Yashica Matte version. Uh, the Yashica Matte camera was a more professional quality camera which uh, was a closer copy of the the Rolle Flex cameras and the latest versions of the Yashica Matte are said to be comparable or even superior to the Rolle Flex cameras and that's kind of reflected in the price today which has now you know gone rather high. Uh, what makes it uh, different from the earlier cameras is this uh, lever winding system on the back which not only winds the film but it charges the shutter and allows you to uh, 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 do everything in a single step whereas the other Yashica Flex cameras require that you wind the film with one a knob and set the shutter with a second knob. Uh, this camera uh, makes the operation simpler and also with the mechanical frame counting system uh, you don't have to uh, uh, push the release button between frames like you do on some of the other Yashica cameras or use the frame counting window on the back. This camera is a much more uh, modern system than the earlier cameras and also uh, a benefit of this camera over the earlier Yashica Flex cameras is these dials on the front where you set the shutter and aperture. What makes this camera superior in some ways to the later Yashica matte cameras is that this camera used the simpler Yashinon lens. Now it might seem that the simpler lens is uh, uh, not exactly uh, something which should make uh, a camera superior to a camera which has a more sophisticated lens, but the Yashica matte cameras with their Lumuxar and later lenses have a problem with haze. And uh, in the earlier Yashica matte cameras, it's very difficult to find uh, a lens which does not have at least some haze in it. And even the later 124G models often suffer from a serious haze on the inside rear element. And in some cases, a few cases, uh, this haze can be uh, cleaned off and the, the glass made clear again. But in most cases, it's permanent. You can reduce it a little bit, and with minor haze, the lens still works quite well, but uh, you can't really get it all the way off. It's just something which is in uh, particular kinds of glass during that era. Optical glass, and you see it in the old Olympus Zuiko lenses, uh, some of the old, uh, uh, say, Canon lenses, which came in the uh, L-mount L -mount lenses for the rangefinder cameras and such. But uh, fortunately, the Ashinon lenses, despite their lower cost and uh, a simpler design, seem to be made with a superior glass. So uh, this camera here with its clean but uh, inferior design will probably work better than a later model Yashica matte with a more sophisticated but hazy lens. So let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls, and functions of the Yashica Auto. Uh, starting at the top here, I usually start at the top. Uh, we have, of course, the pop-up uh, focusing hood and a pop-up focusing loop. Uh, these cameras have a variety of different uh, screen layouts. And this one here, you can kind of see the horizontal and vertical lines uh, for the uh, uh, focusing screen. 
uh, different makers or over the different years these kind of changed in cameras sometimes they are red sometimes they are black sometimes they are kind of a cross hatch pattern like this and other times it's just simply two vertical and two horizontal lines on other cameras it's only horizontal lines and there are a few cameras which have no lines at all it's kind of odd with uh, Yashica in their uh, I guess uh, use of parts in these cameras and uh, the ones with the black lines tend to be a little bit superior because uh, the red lines, the red ink which they use, and these sometimes lifts off or comes off, or if you try to clean the focusing screen, it wipes off. That's if you clean it on the inside. Uh, it doesn't make much difference. These are mainly you know, for people who are beginning uh, in twin lens reflex photography where things kind of move backwards as you're turning the camera from left to right. Uh, the lines are a good guide to help you compose the image, but uh, for, for most of us, simply looking, lining it up with the, the bottom and top and sides of the viewfinder, the, the straight edges are enough to get a, a good image. So, uh, not so really relevant, but uh, a giveaway of the later uh, auto and some of the Ashikamat cameras are, is this uh, focusing screen on the inside. Of course, this camera has a sports finder, which you simply push back like so to open the sports finder. To close it, there's a, a lever here. To close it, simply pop it like this. Uh, over here, we have the uh, frame counter dial, and the frame counter resets automatically when you open the film door. Uh, you open the film door by turning the back side like this. But this lever pops out here, this pin that resets the frame counter. And then uh, when you start winding the film, it will wind up to the number one and the camera is ready to shoot. Uh, when you wind, sometimes it doesn't go like uh, all the way around and line up. Sometimes you, you have to turn it a little bit and sometimes turn it backwards or whatever and then just put the, the knob back into the socket here. That keeps it from getting hung up on things and gets it in the right position to wind to the next exposure. On the bottom here, we have a standard quarter inch tripod socket. On this side here, we have the uh, focusing dial. Uh, this one is missing the plastic cap, which goes in the center and it's kind of exposing the nut on the inside. I've got uh, some extra plastic caps around here somewhere, so I'm gonna go ahead and put one of those in, the, in it when I, when I can dig one out of my uh, parts collection. Here we have the uh, pins for uh, retaining the film spool and take-up spool. Like all Yashica cameras, they pop up and you can turn them and they'll lock op in the open position and as you turn them, they'll pop back downward, which is very convenient. On the top here, we have the strap lugs and uh, these are made, to, these serve two purposes. Uh, first, they, you can put the lug through here and it kind of catches on uh, the tabs on the side. These are also used separately for different kinds of straps. There are a couple of different kind of uh, neck straps you can use with the uh, Yashica TLR. And also these are work as retainers for the leather case. Uh, the leather case in these cameras are kind of hard to come by. Uh, usually really rotten and I don't like to keep the cameras in these cases because they, they hold moisture and the moisture tends to, uh, as it's held in the leather, it tends to seep into the camera and cause corrosion and lifting of the paint and stuff like that. So if you have one of these cameras and you have the leather case, don't store the uh, camera inside the case, kind of keep them separate. Uh, just put them together when you're actually using the camera. The case is good protection for the camera in case you drop it. It does make it more difficult to load and remove the film, but uh, either use a case or get a good neck strap if you're using a TLR camera. Uh, it's, uh, a neck strap or the, the case and a strap are really necessary. Moving to the front of the camera, uh, we have the lens here, which is the eight, eight millimeter, or excuse me, eight centimeter F3.5 Yashinon lens. Uh, really high quality triplet lens. And uh, though they, they were several different varieties of these lenses, they were all, they're all excellent performers. Uh, the Yashinon lenses is very similar to, or probably the same as the Yashimar lenses, which came in the, the A-series cameras. Uh, there were different varieties of lenses, different names in the different ones. The uh, most odd one is like the Heliotar lens, which came in the Yashica Flex S, the one with the built-in light meter. Uh, this is the common Yashinon lens, which you find in pretty much all the later model cameras, which aren't a Yashica mat. Uh, we have a shutter release button here, uh, and around this we have this kind of uh, knurled nut. And uh, to use a cable release, you have to remove this nut and attach a cable release adapter. And with the adapter, you can use a standard cable release. On this side here, we have the switch, which switches between uh, the shutter uh, speed modes for using a flash. On the bottom here we have a self-timer, 
uh, as I always say, try to avoid using the self timers in these old cameras, especially the Yashica Flex cameras, because it's quite fragile. And this is very like 1940s, early 50s technology. You know, these tend to stick, and uh, and they stick because. Uh, the, the gears are made of hardened steel and uh, the washers are also made of steel and the steel compared to the other metal in the uh, shutter uh, tends to rust and it can get jam jammed up and if the uh, self timer gets stuck then the shutter won't operate. Sometimes you can free the self timer by holding the camera in this position so this lever is pointing straight up. Put a little lighter fluid or a solvent and let it run down the lever and will find its way into the mechanism and that will loosen it up. Uh, this also works for cameras which have a sticky slow speed like you're shooting at one second or one half of a second and the camera the, the, the shutter runs too slow or it stops and doesn't wind all the way down. Uh, this is the only access port where you can actually get into the shutter mechanism without taking apart the camera and removing the shutter to clean it, which is a real ordeal in a twin lens reflex camera. Uh, just run some uh, lighter fluid or solvent down here, but just a small amount. If you put too much, it'll get on the shutter blades and the aperture and get them kind of gummy and clean that off, then you have to kind of remove the lens elements, uh, it, which is a little bit of a, a job in these cameras. So just a little bit and that should unstick, may unstick the self timer, but it almost always uh, unsticks the slow shutter speed escapement. On the top here, we have a very convenient uh, readout for the shutter speed and aperture. And as I turn the dials, you can kind of see them move like so. You can kind of hear the kind of mechanical sound as it uh, as it turns the cams for the slow speed mechanism. Uh, it's very easy to use this. You can just look at look in front of the viewfinder uh, down through the top. Whereas on the older cameras, you have to look on the front of the camera when you are setting the shutter speed and aperture. So this is a faster and easier to use system. Uh, loading the film is quite simple. Uh, open the door like so. Uh, put your film in the upper chamber, or excuse me, your take-up spool, put your film in the bottom, pull your film leader over the top, feed it into the take-up spool, and simply wind the take-up spool, and keep winding it until the arrow on the paper back of the film lines up with these two red arrows uh, here on either side of the uh, 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 film chamber, and then simply close the door turn the knob to lock it shut and simply start winding until the number one shows up. It will stop winding automatically. Turn this backwards, lock it into place. Then you can set your uh, shutter speed and aperture. Open your viewfinder and simply compose, focus and shoot like so. That's all there is to it. Anyway, uh, that's it for my video about the Yashica Auto TLR camera. Uh, I'll be listing this one for sale next week. Uh, I just got it and it needs to be gone through and cleaned up. It's already in quite good condition. A uh, very clean camera. The lens is especially nice on this. The only thing is missing is the little plastic cap here. But as I said, I've got a few of these sitting around somewhere. So I'll go ahead and pop it on before I get this thing listed. I'll be making more videos here shortly. If you'd like to see these, uh, please subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. That always helps us here. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And I hope you tune in again soon.